Welcome back. Bill Faith here from STR Unfiltered. Build short term rental wealth, STR Wealth Conference. Let's dive in. This is about filling gap dates. Look, everybody talks about how much their occupancy is and how much money they make during the peak season. I'm here to tell you that the high income earners, the top 1% of hosts, the top 1% that are doing this, EBITDA, focusing on cash flow, highest revenue, highest profit margin are making their money in the off season. Anybody can maximize occupancy during ultra peak season during the summer for most of us, or if you have a ski and ski out property in Aspen or, you know, around any ski resort where we make our money is in the shoulder seasons and the off season. Those of us that can increase occupancy, those of us that can sustain our ADR, that's how we end up making more money than most. So one of the things that's really tough for people is to fill gap nights. It could be one night. It could be two nights. It could be three nights. It can be anything. Mostly during the off season, it's probably going to be one or two nights uh, because you're going to have your settings hopefully far out in advance. You're going to get to the gap nights in a second, but hopefully far out in advance, just to give you a couple of bonus tips here, like over a hundred days. If your lead time is 75 days or 60 days and like over, if, if you have a 60 day lead time for bookings and at 75 days plus, I'm doing three night minimums on the weekends. And it's not until I get to that average booking time, usually about a week ahead of time is when I will drop that down to like a two night on the weekend. And it's really kind of that three, two, one strategy that I talked about running into last summer is I'll run, far, and these are far out dates only. I want to make that abundantly clear. I'll run three nights on, even this is off season, literally winter season, fall season, spring season. We're talking about shoulder season and off season here. I will still have like three night minimums. Even when I get into holidays, I'll have four night minimums or for fall break or whatever that is. And, but typically I'm going to run a three, two, one, and that's going to be three nights on the weekends, two nights during the week, and then the one night uh, gap night. And then when we get closer to the lead time, the average booking lead time, then I will drop that three night on the weekend down to two nights. And it's amazing how far there are planners in this world that'll book, you know, far in advance. So that leads me to the gap nights. The gap nights are typically most people don't do anything with the gap nights. I'm going to give you a strategy here. I teach how to do this uh, in my Superhost library. If you're not familiar with that, you can go to buildstrwealth.com. Check out my Superhost library. It's literally $67 a month. It's like Netflix. Uh, it's extremely beneficial, specifically for new hosts, somebody that has less than three or four properties, uh, over 130 action plans plus messaging templates. And it has this, this my buy, sell, trade group strategy how to get started with co-hosting, list, listing optimization, everything. But it has this, it has the, the gap night sale, right? And this is what I call the upsell, downsell. And this is really, it can be both. So I'm always trying to get somebody to book an extra night. And that's going to be that gap night. So if I have a gap, an open date on a Wednesday, and I have somebody checking out on a Tuesday, and somebody checking in on a Thursday, then I'm going to try to sell that open day to both of them. And number one, I'm going to let both of them know because that person on Thursday is usually going to ask for an early check-in and the person checking out on Tuesday is usually going to ask for what? They're going to ask for a late checkout. So I'm going to say, you know what? I can only accommodate either of those, late checkout or early check-in, as long as I don't have a same-day turnover. And they, and most guests will totally get that. If I have a same day turnover, it takes my cleaners too long. I just, uh, if I, if it does work out, I'll let you check in early for free, but that's typically only going to be an hour or two. So what I do is I try to sell them the, the whole first day. 95% of the time, they do not book that extra day. So this is where the discount comes in to sell them the gap and the leverage point. How you position this is going to determine if it's going to work or not. That's why when I do my 3 2 one pricing strategy and I offer that one night stay, I raise the price by 50, 60%, depending on the market and the existing pricing, typically around 50%. So if it's a $500 a night, it's now $750. Because then I will go in and say, look, hey, Bob, I know you're planning on checking out on Tuesday. You did ask for a late checkout. How would you like to stay? until five o'clock or six o'clock even 
uh, on that night. So you can utilize the whole day on the slopes. You can utilize the whole day on the lake. You can utilize the whole day on the beach, whatever it is based on your location. And I can give you that extra day because I'll have to block off the calendar for 50% off. The psychology is completely changed based on how I've positioned that for Bob. It's not just trying to sell him a full price additional day. He already knows what that's going to cost at 750 bucks. Bob's not willing to pay that. But I come back and I say, hey, Bob, I'm sending this to you first before I send it to the guest that wants the early check-in to give you an opportunity. Now I'm giving him some urgency. Bob's got to make a fucking decision before I send it to the other person or he's going to lose that capability. But I'm also letting Bob know that he can take advantage of the entire day. We're not talking about an extra 200 or 300 bucks to check out at noon or one o'clock. I'm like, Bob, you can stay till five or six. Take the whole day. You're basically getting a whole nother day of vacation for 50% off. Then I send the exact same thing to the guests that will be checking in that wants that early check-in. Same thing. Hey, Tina, you know, more than happy to uh, take care of you. I want to make sure you have a tremendous vacation. Let's get this thing kicked off. You know, amazingly, um, I can get you in at 9 a.m. for 50% off. So same $750 night, 50% off. We're talking like 375 bucks. Remember, that is literally only a $125 discount off the original pricing of $500. Because my gap night raises it to 750. Now I'm giving that 50% off. It's going to be 375. So standard pricing is 500. I'm giving them literally about a 25% discount on a date that just is not going to get booked ever. So what I'm seeing when I execute this is almost a 40 to 42% lift. 40 to 42% lift. That's a conversion rate. That means that people are taking advantage of this gap night. But you should also be extending this to people that are coming in and they're, it's not just a gap night. Just let them know, hey, cleaners are scheduled to clean the day before an arrival. Um, you know, whatever it is, I can get you in early, but it's going to cost X. Give them the complimentary. If you have a 4 p.m. check-in, like most people, let them know. You can get them in. It'll be free as long as the house is available at 2 o'clock. But if you do want to secure that in advance, it's going to cost X and set your pricing accordingly. Most of us undervalue this. Let me say that again. Most of us as human beings undervalue this. Make whatever you think that value should be. If you charge 200 a night and you think, well, I'll charge 50 or 75, increase it by like 25%. We all undervalue it. This works very, very well for drive-in vacation rental markets. As well for smaller units, one, two bedrooms in urban areas. And it's harder when people have to fly into your market. So if you're in Puerto Rico, if you're in Cancun, if you're in Hawaii, much more challenging. But do remember, even when people do fly, a lot of people don't like having to connect with flights or wait for crews to come in and connect. They're getting savvy about travel. A lot of people are taking those early flights out. So a lot of people, even when they do fly, they arrive to their vacation or location early. They want to take advantage of that day. And the earlier they can get in, the more they can get settled and relax. So... Make sure that you're offering this for your gap nights. It's This is how you turn a huge profit in gap nights. Look, it's one of the reasons how I was able to start off my year down 31% in January and February of 2023 on my portfolio. That's year over year for properties that I've owned from 2022 into 2023. And then as of recording of this uh, in early September, I'm literally up now six and a half percent in 2023 over 2022. It's these types of strategies that I typically only share for like my host academy and my mastermind members that I want to share with you because this is going to make or break your fall, winter, and spring season before we get back to primary season. That peak season, anybody can make money. Remember, we make our money in the shoulder seasons and the off seasons. And this is the one way that one of the ways I'm doing it that literally 40 percent plus right around just like 41.7 to be exact. I think it's like 0.8, whatever, 41 to 42%. My ADR for my entire portfolio is just under $1,100 a night. It's like, I don't know, 1,080, 83, 84, 85 bucks a night. So let's just call it 1,100 because I'm not that smart. 1,100. If I can fill 40% of my gap days at an average of around $550 a night, and I'm doing roughly about 30 bookings, 30 to 35 bookings per property 
on an annualized basis. Hmm. That is maybe 40 bookings, I guess. No, maybe, yeah, probably about 40, 45 bookings per property. You know, you're talking about another 20, an easy 15 to $20,000 a year on the larger properties. The reality is it's usually around 10 to $12,000 is what I'm getting on that uplift by selling the gap nights. So implement this strategy. Let me know uh, how it goes. I'd love for you to uh, leave me a comment if you're watching this on YouTube uh, or catching a reel on Instagram to know how it's going for you. Remember, it's about the copywriting. It's about the positioning. It's not just about doing a, a hard sell to them. We've got to use the psychology. If you didn't catch that part, go back and listen to it again. Thanks for joining me on this episode of SDR Unfiltered, everybody. Happy hosting.